Wingman Joker thank you for listening to this channel and please support the channel. Please subscribe. Chapter 452. Destiny works in strange ways. Bad girl. Spank. Ah. Spank. Ah. Mom. Please stop. I didn't mean to. Ah. It is not my fault. He was so sus. Quote. Sus or not. You should have investigated him before sending him to the tournament. If he wasn't lucky enough, he would have died or turned into a zombie by your sister. Spank. Ah. I am sorry. Quote. Spank. That was what Aerith heard when she opened her room's door a little after midnight. She seemed to have slept for a few hours and this really helped clear up her mind. Quote dot 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 quote. She sighed as she slowly descended the stairs while ignoring the screaming. She could tell that it was his mother spanking Lyra like old days. That girl had always been a naughty and rebellious lass, which led to that young man scamming her back then. That accident was really her wake-up call as she began to act properly. However, the girl still had some things that needed fixing like her habit of quickly judging people and her vengeful personality. Aerith reached the living room right when her mother, who had just finished delivering the punishment, walked out, leaving the naughty girl thrown on the carpet with her butt up like a broken doll. So you are awake, Rosette asked as she wiped her spanking rod with a handkerchief and put it in her storage ring. Um, Aerith nodded, she really needed that sleep to collect her thoughts. Did you calm down and figure things out? Rosette asked. Um, kinda, let's talk in my office, Rosette said before turning to one of the maids. Drag Lyra to the infirmary and give her something for the inflation, nothing for the pain. Yes mistress, the maid shivered then ran inside. Isn't that too much? Aerith asked. The girl has been acting a little too rash lately, I was feeling sorry for what happened to her with that guy before, so I didn't intervene, but your aunt Ariana was right, the girl needed a spanking or she might really cause a catastrophe someday. Rosette sighed as they walked. Um, the mother and daughter soon reached a dim office where Aerithir closed the door and then followed her mother to sit on one of the two couches in the middle. What happened? Rosette asked. Just as Victor said, I was a little overconfident and lost the bet. Aerith blushed a bit as she looked down. Him being a pervert in heat really puts me off my guard. My dear child, you have read the same reports I did. Victor is not what he appears to be. How can Theodore's son be a complete idiot? Rosette said. Ever since Lyra captured him, you two were playing in his palm, in the end, you ended up falling. Ah, what do you mean, he might even have manipulated me? I think so, he is using the pervert act to hide his actions, I can even bet that the talisman he used on you was not the only one he was given, or he wouldn't have made a bet using it, he must have used one on himself to remove the system disabling curse before, that's why he knew it would work. Ah, that's how he survived the competition, he could use artifacts. Aerith exclaimed. Yes. Ah. Aerith opened her mouth. She was not a stupid girl by any means, but Victor's image of a depraved pervert was just so strong. Destiny really works in strange ways. You kept refusing the proposals of all those princes and dignitaries to end up falling to this guy's tricks in the end. She said as she relaxed in her seat, clearly teasing her daughter. Quote dot 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 quote. Aerith bit her lip. Can you cancel it? It is a system marriage right? Um. I am not sure, but probably no, I heard it requires the two parties to agree, and even then, it would be too troublesome. Rosette sighed, I don't think it is a bad thing, you two guys seem to be having a good time when we walked in on you. She, said with a smirk, ah, don't tease me, I don't even know why I acted like that. Aerith bushed, I just can't resist him at all, my mind gets all fogged up when he is close by, that's why I had to escape in the afternoon, she whispered. Could he have used some aphrodisiac on me? Oh, probably not. I and your aunt could have easily smelled it in your blood, Rosette frowned. It might have something to do with his bloodline, she pondered. His bloodline, he has something demonic in him. I will tell you about it once we investigate it completely. Rosette said, pondering on something. How is your soul? The curse is gone. I can feel that it is stable. It will probably heal if I eat all those guys who have a contract with me, she said. Don't do that. It is not good for your soul to be too heterogeneous, we wouldn't have gone that route in the first place if it was not the only option. Rosette said, now that we have enough time, I will find you some soul healing herbs and see how things would work. Um, Aerith nodded, do you think Victor's master can heal her lordship? I don't know, but your curse was something even her lordship could not fathom, and a single dispelling talisman was all that is needed to it. Maybe he can, but from the way Victor described him I think he has some big secret. Really. 
Aerith frowned. Yes, Victor hinted his master might have a hidden agenda, the answer is whether he is on our side or not, and what price he would want for healing the Lord. Oh, let's leave those questions until we meet him. Rosette said, if you don't have anything else, you can leave, I bet you are starving, you slept without a dinner, and after all that action. Mom, Eric blushed as she stood up and turned to leave. All right, what does the number 11 next to the marriage indicator in the system status mean? She turned and asked. 11. Rosette Fornwed. I don't know, system marriage is as rare in this world as it was in ours, I will have to ask. Ellipsis. Axel sighed as he sat alone in his old, hastily renovated, prison cell. Damn, that was close. After the police chief threw him into a cell that was filled with criminals who ran a gay prostitution ring, he really had a hard time seducing them as they were really interested in him. Since this cell was a part of the old building, it was situated on the far side of the police station where the few guards were told to ignore any screaming voices. So it took until the next morning for him to finally get to speak to the chief again and explain that he was not interested in men. Damn it, he felt disgusted even hitting those guys, the noises they made as he smacked them were not that of pain. Damn it, what kind of depraved scumbags were those? Why did he have to endure an entire night with them? Apparently, the fake one seemed to have come to this prison before where he demanded to be put with a sissy guy where they hit it off creating this entire misunderstanding. How can a person be so depraved for sex, going for it even while spending a couple of days in prison? Anyway, hopefully, the family would be able to sort the situation today, he was really getting bored here in. The holding cell door opened. I said I don't want any. Axel began to speak until he noticed that the newcomer was not a cop but a boy with short crew cut hair. He looked about 13 years old, dressed in a stylish black military dress. You are, a friend, the boy said as he stepped into the cell and closed the door. Call me Malcolm, Malcolm, Axel frowned, watching the boy lean on the closed door arrogantly, crossing his hands. Yes, destiny really works in strange ways you know, when I was assigned to come here by his lordship, I would have never guessed that. You were the one who was behind it all. Behind what? Axel didn't get what the boy meant. Killing my older brothers, destroying our den, then making me go through that hellish training to be a slave assassin working for you, the boy said as from behind his back he took a very long and sharp blade and rested it on his shoulder. Did he think that he looked cool with that? I don't remember that, Axel said. What the fuck did the fake do? You are here to kill me. He frowned and asked as she began to inspect the cell for a way out or something to use as a weapon. Maybe, you seem more calm than I expected you to be, aren't you going to scream for the guards? Malcolm asked, you should have dealt with them before coming here, Axel said, why was this guy acting like this? If he came to kill him he should have attacked straight away. Ha ha, right, Malcolm said arrogantly, they didn't stand a chance. It is their fault for putting you in this secluded place, if you were in the main building, it would have been a little troublesome. He spat, but I guess you needed a place to practice your hobbies away from prying eyes, right? Quote dot 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 quote. Axel cursed at the fake for the eleventh time. Now, you are thinking whether you would be able to take me by yourself or not, Malcolm said, putting his finger on the cell's cast iron table that was welded to one of the walls. His finger sank right through it as if it was made out of butter. Then he smacked it with his fist making it bend and deform. Axel gasped, what was this kid's level? Scared yet, Malcolm smirked, the way a kid with a gun would. Enough with the chit chat, Alex said. Since you are not attacking you must want something from me, what? Three things, first, sign this. Malcolm threw a stack of papers on the now deformed table. This is, the rights for Crimson Pearl's work, sign it. Quote dot 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 quote. Quote dot 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 quote. How do I know that you will not kill me after signing? You don't, but if I were to kill you, my master would be the first suspect when he releases the movie, so I won't do it. Aren't you and your master afraid of my family? Axel asked as he eyed the contract, the other side's name was not filled in. They will not dare make trouble for a mere daddy, now sign it or lose a hand. Quote dot 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 quote. Come one now, I don't have all day. Oh, I don't have a pen, Axel said. Use your filthy blood, Malcolm said, probably quoting from some movie. Quote dot 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 quote. Do you want me to cut a vein or two for you? Axel glared at Malcolm for a moment, then without taking his eyes off him. He bit his finger then signed the papers using the signature he learned from Olaf. Damn it, he would make sure to find this guy as soon as he was out. Good, Malcolm said, grabbing the contract as soon as it was signed, and putting it in a storage ring that was on his finger. 
Now for the second thing, tell me, you have a maid named Lily, right? Where is she, Lily? Axel frowned. Olaf did mention that she was Victor's personal maid, but he didn't see her at the mansion. Why do you want her? I want her to be my maid of course. Malcolm said with clear desire in his eyes. Now, where is she? I don't know, I sent her to. To assassinate that guy Caspian who stole my bride, she hasn't returned since. Axel quickly made an excuse using all the info he knew. Are you an idiot? Malcolm gasped. Damn it, no wonder Celestia couldn't find her. You know something, not your business, hopefully, she is fine. Malcolm said as he glared at Axel as if he was his mortal enemy. Yeah, now for the last thing. Malcolm said, die, he attacked with his blade directly. It was one smooth movement an assassin would make. Axel was ready, he grabbed the bunk bed and in a split second flung it between himself and Malcolm, but it didn't do a thing as the sharp blade cut through it as if it was made of paper. Ah, Axel who was about to die screamed like a little girl. Bang, ta 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 ta, -ta. the brick wall behind Axel exploded, and the sound of gunfire rang, forcing Malcolm to dodge at the last moment to the side, saving his sorry life. Who are you and why are you trying to kill him? The newcomer who walked through the rebel asked. It was none other than Alice who had a large machine gun in her hand. Damn it, Alice von Weiss, Malcolm muttered. Obliviate, he yelled as he threw something on the ground. Shit, Alice yelled, yanking Axel to her side, and then activating a protection talisman. B-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-O-M. An explosion rocked the police station, yet for some strange reason, nothing was destroyed. When Axel opened his eyes, he just found himself standing in his cell next to Alice. Ah. When did you come here? Why did you destroy that wall? He asked in surprise. What do you mean? I just saved your sorry life. Alice said. What? Why? Axel paused and looked at the damage in his cell. What? How? Didn't he just wake up? Why was his cell so wrecked up? You don't remember? Alice asked with a very grave voice, grabbing a strange looking pendant that she hung on her neck and looking at it. It was shining with a dim blue color. Remember who? He frowned. Wait. He woke up brushed his teeth, and, ah, suddenly his head began to hurt like crazy and the memories of the last 15 minutes that he just lost returned to him. I, what the hell just happened? He asked in bewilderment, how did I just forget that I was almost killed? Quote dot dot dot, let's leave for now, we will speak later. Alice said as she grabbed him and dragged him out of the building. I need to call my master. She murmured under her breath. Ellipsis. After eating a late dinner, Aerith, who didn't know what to think, slowly left the dining room and walked in a certain direction, the guest bedroom where Victor stayed. She was not going there to sleep with him, not at all. She was not that kind of a horny girl. That's what she kept saying to herself. She just wanted to make things clear with him. Yes, that's IT. Nothing else. When she finally reached the guest room on the third floor, she paused right in front of the door her hand that was about to touch the door frozen in place. She didn't have the courage to knock. Would he really think she was that desperate? Why would he? She was not here for that. Damn it. Mistress, is there a problem? A maid who was making a nightly patrol suddenly asked from behind startling her. Ah, uh, no. Go to your business. Aerith coldly commanded as she looked at the door again. When the fuck did she become a coward? Taking a deep breath she knocked on it. Knock, knock. There was no answer. Knock, knock. Again, no answer. She frowned. Could he be asleep? Yes, no. She needed some answers. She had to wake him up. Knock 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 knock. No answer. She frowned. Is this Victor's room? She asked the maid who, hearing the knocking, came back. Yes, mistress. The maid nodded. Aerith frowned and tried to see if there was anyone behind the door. There was no one. She grabbed the doorknob and pushed the door and pushed it. The door didn't budge. She used all her force and pushed it open. Bam. The door was flung open, making Aerith almost fall to the ground if not caught by some steady hands. Aerith, wife, why are you here? Is there a problem? It was Victor who caught her and asked. Ah, what? Bam, before she could speak the door was closed behind her. The one who did it was an old man dressed in a black cloak that hid his face, for some strange reason, she couldn't feel his existence at all, as if he didn't exist. How high was his level? Danger. That was what every cell in her body screamed. You, Aerith instinctively jumped out from Victor's grasp, took her sword from her storage ring, and prepared to defend herself. It was her military training in action. Down, demon, the old man said, 
pointing with his pointy hand and forming a strange pentagram shape with his fingers, making her feel as if a huge mountain suddenly fell down on top of her, bringing her to the ground where she felt as if a strange force was imprisoning her. She couldn't move at all. You, she could barely even speak. Die, the old man said, taking a strange looking sword and aiming it at her head. She could feel it. Death. Master, please stop. Victor shouted as he stood between them with his hands stretched to protect her. She is my wife. Your wife, you pervert piece of shit. She is a fucking demon kin. The old man shouted angrily. A what? Victor frowned. You are a demon. He turned to RT and asked with a frown. She couldn't answer. She is like the one you saw that demon fight at the elven domain. She is a half demon. Don't you see that fucking horn on her head? The old man said. Ah. Victor frowned for a moment. I, but still, no matter what, she is my wife now. Being horny is not a crime. Please spare her, Victor shouted. For the first time in her life, Aerith didn't feel angry for someone calling her horny. The old man glared at Victor, allowing Aerith to take a glimpse at his wrinkles underneath the black robe. Demons should all be killed. Weren't you the one who begged me for nine days to make you in as a disciple and teach you my way? Weren't you the one who begged me to teach you how to kill that nutcracker demon who was after you? The old man asked. And now you want to spare a demon just because she fucked you? Regardless, she is a good person, a good girl. Victor said, we have a system marriage, she can't harm me. Ah, oh, a system marriage. The old man was clearly surprised as he put down the hatched in his hand. Really, yeah, Victor nodded. She lost a bet, the master sighed, making the crushing pressure on Aerith lessen a bit, still, she couldn't move. If I knew that I would be discovered here, I wouldn't have gone through all that effort, he added as he threw a paper at Victor. I placed your sister and her elven slave in a mansion near here, send someone to get them, he said as he turned to leave. Master, Victor wanted to stop him. Don't worry, I will come see you later, I can't stay here for long, I have many things to do. My mother-in-law wants to meet you. Victor interrupted. I know, it is about the Lord's curse, he said, making Aerith almost gasp. He knew, the Lord's curse, Victor asked. Yes, the Storm Lord has some very nasty curse. That's why we came here in the first place, he said. I discovered this conspiracy when I infiltrated the elven lands, they are the ones behind it, cooperating with demons. The old man added, what? Victor gasped, and so did Erti. Despite my hate for the lords, a balance must be kept to avoid the world's collapse, that's why I sent you here with two zero-ranked talismans, use one of them to try and heal her to earn her favor. I don't want any karma to connect me to saving a lord. He explained, giving Aerith a look. She was not stupid as she finally understood that he didn't want to be discovered here, he wanted Victor to take the credit. What? Ah, but, I already used those talismans, Victor said in a low voice. You what? The master asked in a very cold voice. Didn't I tell you to keep them for emergencies? Ah, I had to. They cursed me not to use the system and had to use the first one to dispel it in. Save my life in that contest, the other one was used on Aerith. Her, to win the bet and marry her. Victor quickly explained. Didn't you say you can make them whenever you want? Victor asked, making Aerith look at him with pity. She didn't know what zero rank talismans were, but they were definitely not easy to come by. Damn it, it was all Lyra's fault, one of the talismans would have been used on the Lord. With that though, Aerith no longer felt sorry for her young sister, their mother should have spanked her more. Quote dot 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 quote. Surprisingly the master only sighed hearing Victor. I should have warned you, it is destiny I guess, I can make more, but the base materials are very rare. What, he can, Aerith almost gasped, really, Victor asked, I will need to make a visit to the demon lands to collect some materials, we'll be back in a week or so, the master said. But since I will be working overtime, I will need compensation. He said as he walked to a side table, took a piece of paper, and began writing on it using a charcoal pen. Finishing, he folded it and put it in an envelope then gave it to Victor. This is, it is the bill, the old man said dismissively, and with those words the old man began to disappear. All right, I left Amira with your sister, take care of her for me for a while. And be wary of that elf, I scammed him into thinking that it was the Sun Lord's will, that he should came here, he said as he completely vanished in a cloud of black smoke. Moments later, Aerith could feel the pressure on her disappear. Master, Victor who seemed to want to ask something, yelled, but no answer came. Ah, are you okay wife? 
He turned to Aerith and quickly helped her to her feet. I am fine, was that really your master? She asked as she stood up and dusted her robes. Um, let's talk about that later. Victor said, giving Aerith the two papers in his hand. I think you should give those to your mother now. Um, Aerith said, grabbing them both then turning to the door and opening it. Thanks, husband, she said in a low voice right before leaving with a blush. Demon girl was successfully captured, do you want to give her a nickname? The nickname, horny girl, was registered successfully.